history repeats itself in the patterns in the stone. We close our eyes and fumbling, we listen. This is the solar system, this is the charge controller, the battery, there's an inverter to convert from 12 volts to 110. That's the solar panel out there. Um, this is a river tunnel. This is simply water that's coming from the sump and uh, there's no rocks in there and I found that this that lettuce last year was growing in stagnant water I mean it's amazing once I put the lettuce heads in here they just started going nuts I have one that's already going to seed there and I'll save those seeds uh, it turns out this was a head of lettuce that was growing in stagnant water so it's very old it was uh, starving for some nutrients or it would be a lot bigger than that but so when that goes to seed I just simply put a plastic bag on the top and then shake it and there's hundreds maybe a thousand seeds that end up in the bag and a lot of these uh, lettuce heads that I have in the seed starter over there are from last year's heads of lettuce that went to seed artichoke cucumber they're already flowering there's baby cucumbers tomatoes it's kind of interesting the rogue shoots I just pinched off and when you pinch them off as opposed to cutting them they heal very quick and then you get a lot of top growth so this thing is taken off since I pinched the shoot uh, there's going to be tomatoes right there I was going to pinch that off and I said well because there's already going to be tomatoes on that little shoot I figured I'd leave it uh, bell peppers are already flowering um, the the iron deficiency was solved just by putting liquid iron in there I no longer have to balance the pH it is perfectly balanced. Look at that, <laughs> that onion, this sky is unbelievable. Uh, the difference between the garlic and the onion is this is flat leaf and then that's a round leaf so big that it just, it tipped over. That's probably two, two and a half feet long right there. This is uh, yellow squash, a little, corn that I threw in here and there. This is a zucchini plant in the midst of the garlic and onion. It's just crazy. Look at that sky. I mean, it won't be long I'll be pulling them and eating those. These uh, scallions were planted at the same time as this grow bed over here. And look at the size of these compared to what's in the aquaponics system so I mean you can't beat aquaponics this nursery slash greenhouse is really two 100 square foot dog kennels and on one side of one I opened it up and the other side I opened it up connected them together and I created another hundred square feet of of space in here from from nothing really and then design this is three quarter inch schedule 40 this is a 45 up here it didn't quite make it um, and I didn't want to rigidly do it I wanted a little bit of spring and arc in this roof system so this worked out great this is a down a down tube right here with another piece of three quarter pipe down in there that's where the rigidity comes from this these lines between the the down tubes is just merely for rain runoff uh, because without without this one there were big pockets in here that would collect rain 
um, this channel <laughs> it really really is amazing um, the root system let's see what can I pull out of there this is a cabbage yeah that that root root system is even too big to pull out I'll never get that back in there with one hand let's see this little head of lettuce here the uh, there are some you know the roots turn a little bit of brown with sediment but as you can see this head of lettuce it's, it's really not affecting it the, the the heads of lettuce I think grow so fast that there's really no need to filter the water you know to reduce the sediment um, the strawberries are going nuts these are a little small for them to turn red. That's normal for a young plant. That's a big old herky one there. Can't wait to eat it. And that'll, that'll ripen at, at a good size. And there's probably, I don't know, a dozen or more strawberries on there that are growing. And those, the strawberry tower, they love, they love that strawberry tower. And the river rock seems to work pretty good because the moisture really wicks around that those rocks very well and all I did was just fill that and it's just a little little tube up here here's my manifold that go to all the beds bed one two three four then the fish tank this is winding out for this uh, river tunnel I guess I'll call it and then the other one comes to the strawberry tower rain catchment um, this is string that I threw on top of the greenhouse and the reason for that is I have an opening here for fresh air to go through and when the wind blows it creates a low pressure on the top kind of like an airfoil and it was lifting the plastic up so the easiest way to solve that problem is just run strings across the top and I no longer have that problem. This gutter system, all I used here was L brackets to hold the gutter because once that fills up, there's quite a bit of water weight on a torrential downpour. These plastic tanks, uh, that's just a weep hole to prevent vacuum. This is a cone that I cut up. Here's the downspout. Had to throw a screw in there to keep that from sliding off. And this is that plastic poly with a little single shutoff valve. I'm still in the process of creating drip, drip irrigation in the in the grow beds. The in the winter time for the greenhouse, all I'll do is throw a a, a 10 foot piece of plastic on either side of that, and then uh, to be good to go. This is just loosely draped. I haven't trimmed that yet. This is another tank. This tank feeds, this is the same thing on this side. This feeds the level of the aquaponic system. And I really should cover that. I had to modify the, uh, all it is is a, a, a toilet float valve assembly that's in here sideways and what you have to do is you have to take the cap off and there's a little o-ring on the plunger just remove that o-ring there's no need for it um, because this is gravity feed you want a minimum amount of friction so all it is is a flat washer that seals a hole and it works perfectly as that calls for water and it rains it fills and when it's at a certain level it stops this is just a dishwasher to garden hose adapter and that's just one of those toilet type jobs another Y another Y here I have to pinch off this pressure to the bed to get enough pressure into this to feed the river tunnel uh, what else uh, always have more seedlings going I'm ready to plant some more my last aquaponics setup had granite rock in it and uh, I had difficulty 
maintaining the pH level. Had to keep throwing acid in there to uh, bring the pH down. So it was high in alkalinity. So when I, after a while you realize there's a problem. So I took the granite rock and did a vinegar test. And how you do that is just get a, a cup of vinegar, some regular white vinegar, and drop a granite rock in there and you watch it closely and if it has little bubbles that come up then uh, it is high in alkalinity so that's why there is river rock in here I got this river rock from Lowe's and uh, I actually asked them if I could take a rock for a vinegar test of course then I had to explain what I was doing but I brought that home, dropped it in the vinegar, no bubbles. So I knew that this was a very neutral medium to use. The nice thing about it is it's very easy on your hands to, uh, to throw the plants in, dig them up, move them around. Uh, speaking of that, I have to move this zucchini plant because what I noticed here was that the onions and garlic rub on the leaves and they uh, they start causing problems on these leaves so I've got to move that and just to show you how easy that is to do you just dig under it lift the rocks up at the same time you lift the plants up you do it a little bit of distance away from it so you don't hurt the roots and all these roots should come up completely undamaged so it's it's really nothing to move these around if you find that you put something in the wrong spot you could just very very easily move it right over here I want to dig down a ways to get the the roots pretty deep that's it nothing to it another little trick I learned is once you have top growth and other leaves you can clip these seed leaves off because all they do is steal energy from the plant so you just basically snip those off because they're no longer needed I had some old pallets so it was a little bit of a pain to get these slats off of here without breaking them but it's a little rustic and there's a gap between here you don't want to cancel out all of the light but I just simply ran these through the hinges on there and then I cut the underside of the board right here as a very very simple cover for the fish and it makes them feel more comfortable when I feed them I open the door and then they know that there's going to be food that's dropped in the tank for feeding and uh, try not to slam that too much to startle them I want them to be very comfortable and happy in there. This side will give you access to the aerators. All right, I want to cover organic pest control. This is just a regular spray bottle. And because you have fish in this system, you have to be very careful what you use to control the pests. And you fill this up with regular clean water. And then you add caro syrup. Now you can use the clear or the dark, really doesn't matter. What this does is it fools the pests into thinking that the plant is very healthy 
because all the plant matter has sugars and uh, it either smells or tastes those sugars and it moves on to a weaker uh, plant so it's worked pretty good <laughs> then you just add just a tiny bit of regular soap and what that does is it helps the caro syrup to stick to the plant leaves then you just simply soak the plant leaves over and under everything especially lettuce 